Uh, I'm going to talk to you about the dynamic MPFL reconstruction as um, a technique that is not that known, but uh, more and more people start using it. Uh, these are conflicts of interest that I have, um, not for this uh, lecture. So if we um, go and uh, see uh, all the recurrent lateral dislocations of the patella, we see that it, uh, a dislocation is caused by a pathomorphological joint uh, geometry. And if we go through the literature, we can see there are more than 100 procedures that uh, they, 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 they are described. Um, as Stenson said in 2015, a patella dislocation is not a coincidence, but it's a mechanical event uh, being a result of a, of a false or a pathological anatomy. Um, till now, we know um, lots of procedures, uh, either the ones that change the load of the low direction of the extension mechanism of the patella um, by forces that actually lateralize the patella uh, procedure, for example, insole pr procedure, which is not uh, being used that much anymore. And of course, on the other side, we have the reconstruction of the medial soft tissue structures, the MPFL. So MPFL, as we all know, is the commonly injured um, uh, ligament, and it's elongated in most cases after a uh, patella dislocation or after a current lateral patella dislocation. And it's a really, really important uh, tissue for uh, the uh, stability of, of the patella. Um, if till now, what uh, we've seen are the static uh, the MPFL techniques that have been described with the, the most common one being the one, the Schottler technique by using uh, a gracilis uh, tendon as an autograft and uh, you have two fixation points, one the patella in the uh, one in the, uh, in the femoral fix fixation, the so-called uh, Schottler point. Uh, what's is exactly as I'm going to tell you in a bit the problem in this case. Um, we've seen in this MPFL, in the static MPFL procedures, um, we've had a good clinical is, uh, results up to five years, but still post-operatively, we see quite a lot of complications. Most compli uh, possible complication um, are the over of the patella and of course the incorrect placement of the graft uh, in, the femoral, in the femoral point. And if we see the systematic review uh, that Shaw actually did in 2012, uh, including 25 articles and 629 knees, we saw there was, there was a complication rate of 26.1%, uh, one of these being a patella fracture, uh, limitation of the range of motion, pain, and instability. So that's why um, in 2007 and then afterwards 2014, uh, first Osterman and then Becher, the one that modified this technique, came up and they said, okay, we have to find something else. And they came up with this dynamic MPFL reconstruction. Um, the indications uh, for it are pretty similar with the ones with the static MPFL reconstruction, but at the same time, you can use it even in young patients, uh, patients that don't uh, have for example, closure of the epiphyseal plates. Of course, contraindications is a, a, a huge valgus deformity, more than 15 degrees TDDG distance, 20 of uh, two centimeters, an antiversion more than 25. And of course, not having semitendinosus or gracilis tendon uh, or having a neurogenic instability. Before we go on and do this technique, um, we have to find out, of course, we have to have an MRI in order to evaluate the MPFL and measure the TTTG distance. In case of uh, valgus deformity, uh, we do a full le length x-rays in order to measure that. And of course, in the antiversion, we do a rotation CT scan in order to maybe proceed and do an osteotomy, derotation osteotomy. And of course, we can use uh, the uh, patella tangential view x-rays to evaluate if we have a patella dysplasia or a trochlear dysplasia. What we actually use um, um, 
as a guide is this table is being uh, described is the from the committee of AGA, the uh, German Arthroscopic Society in 2015. Uh, what it has to do with the instability of the patella in different degrees of flexion in 30, 60, 90 degrees. So we, uh, uh, it, it depends on the degrees we have to see and uh, actually apply the, the technique that, uh, that we have to do. So the technique itself, it's quite simple. What we do, as you see here, is, as we know from the ACL surgery, we just detach the gracilis tendon, or you can even use the semitendinosus tendon, but you just detach the gracilis tendon on the uh, distal attachment. And then what we do on top of it is we have to whip stitch the tendon. Um, in my case, well, what I do instead of uh, not because I want to uh, kind of spare some time, uh, I don't want to lose some time. What I use is this um, um, uh, quite good tool that I have there as a so-called speed trap. So you just uh, pull on the sutures and you have your um, your whip stitch right away. And you just have to remove um, the just the end of the tendon, as you see here. So in order, uh, when you pull the tendon into your, your uh, bone canal afterwards, it can it can pass through it uh, uh, easier. So afterwards, you do a medial incision, medial to the patella, and you dissect the patella, the uh, the first uh, one third of the proximal patella, the medial side, till the bone, in order to find out the attachment of uh, of our tendon, of our graft. And afterwards, you have to uh, prepare, open up the fibrous membrane. And after doing that, you bring your clamps, as you see here, this overhaul, and you have to do it a couple of times in order to have to do your tunnel and to have an easy access. And what's really important here is that your clamp here, when you bring your tendon, has to be uh, anterior, as you see here, anterior uh, from the sartorius fascia, because that's the key point of this operation. The sartorius fascia spills a great role here as a hypomochlion that uh, actually helps the tendon um, have the, the 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 vector that we need. And in this um, in this case, we bring the tendon proximally. On top of that, we kind of release. Um, the tendon in order to have kind of to slide a bit better, to have a, a better access, to have a, a better pull. Then what we do in the, um, the medial third, um, uh, the medial proximal third of the patella is, as you see here, we bring a guide, um, as we know from the ACL surgery. Um, we do it transpatrally, and then in order to... Um, exclude or to be sure that uh, this guide is not in the joint, we can uh, use our arthroscope and just have a look if it's in the joint. If it's in the joint, you have to reinsert it, of course. Um, after that, we ream uh, 15 to 20 millimeters of depth in the patella, not more than that. And the rimmer is a 4.5 rimmer, um, as you see uh, here. Then what we do is uh, we uh, need no, here, uh, sorry, you, you will need a, um, a passing suture, a shuttle suture, uh, what, where we bring the sutures of the loaded tendon to the other side. And then after bringing the sutures to the other side, as you see here, we have to pull on these sutures in order to get the tendon in our uh, uh, bone canal that we reamed already. Um, afterwards, um, we have to flex the knee um, in uh, 30 degrees and um, we put on the other side on the sutures and we, uh, most of the times are kind of tricky. We have to help kind of the tendon in order to get it in the hole. As you see here with a kind of a clamp, um, it's another 
uh, maybe trick that I might um, suggest here is to move, you kind of uh, do a circle and uh, on your reamer in order to have the entrance of, the, of your hole a bit bigger in order to bring your tenon um, a bit easier in there. And then you uh, put your guide there and what we bring is uh, uh, the smallest screw that I found is, is a five um, uh, by 12 millimeter screw, it's a milagro screw. Um, and in 30 degrees of flexion, and uh, by just pressing the patella to the medial side, uh, we fix our tendon in there. On top of it, what I do at the end, you see here how stable the, uh, the tendon is. Uh, what I do at the end is on the other side, I do uh, the so-called safety sutures. And if you wanna reinforce your whole construct uh, by closing up your fascia, you can uh, take uh, the, the tendon on top of it. So you have a kind of a, a triple enforcement. So the aftercare after, uh, after the operation is a two weeks of a PT control brace in uh, 0, 10, 30 degrees. And then the, the three to five weeks, you have uh, 0, 0, 60 degrees. And the following two weeks, 90 degrees. Um, we, uh, the weight bearing of the patient is the four weeks of, we give him a partial weight bearing and then he can proceed with full weight, weight bearing. The only disadvantage from uh, of this procedure is the pain post-operatively because of the tension of the tendon. That's why uh, we use some catheter that they, our anesthetists actually have to um, uh, kind of do it uh, on, on our patients. In conclusion, uh, this technique is really safe. It's an easy technique. We don't have the placement failures uh, on the femur because we don't have any fixation point there. It can be used even in children with open epiphyseal plates. And biomechanically, there is no alteration of the patella kinematic, um, as Ostermeyer said. And it's not in comparison to insult procedure where we um, notice an patella tilt or an over-medialization in the static MPFL reconstruction. Thank you very much for your attention.